Mm. <laughs> Alright, we got this uh, it's ocean white fish and tuna feast and gravy. I just had the tuna feast. Right. But, uh, tuna feast, yeah, tuna feast. Um, not, not even sure if that's fish, <laughs> that's just tuna feast. Nick, I take this out. We got seafood and whipped egg souffle with Pacific shrimp and garden greens. <laughs> uh, that's not I think the egg souffle has, that's a given. Um, From the Pacific, this is like imported. So are we comparing like brands here or just the different flavors? I don't know if we really want to get in brand war, but whiskers and fancy feast. I think we really just want to get in flavors. Um, and it's not so much, maybe part of it is what you like better, but part of it is can you recognize what it is? And then can the cat recognize what it is? God. That smells like that one. Fish. Actually, it's not terrible. Okay, we can pull this up. A little salty. No, that's chicken. <laughs> God, this is a pretty big fillet. <laughs> uh. Oh, see that, Bruno? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> what is God. that? Three, two, and one. one. Tastes like made paint thinner. That's nice, unlike anything I've ever tasted before. It's just it's weird, man. It's like, like it's like fish jerky. Yeah. Okay, it's not the bad. It's just it's super salty. Oh. It is like super oh. salty. I mean, that's really salty. <laughs> oh. No, it, that's dog food. Yeah. It's like really like, yeah, I've it, eaten dog food before. It's, dog food is really salty, yeah. yeah. Okay. And that'd be a funny little bit too of us on the speakerphone with the doctor. And I can I can just call a med student or something. I don't know. Okay. We'll call a vet. We could get, call and ask be like, all right, we know it's not good for cats to eat human food. Like humans eat cat food. Human food. <laughs> yeah. Maybe um maybe I'll come out. I don't know. I mean um I know it's, I know it's kind of crowded there, but I wanted to talk to David about um why he's filming me right now.
It's the best of the Midnight Barbecue. Uh, Adam Gottschalk and Nick Noe here in our new Star Hill Studios. Uh, Bruno's in here uh, with us as well. And uh, this is done for two reasons. One, because we've in the, in the few months that we've been on the air now, we've been able to assemble a lot of clips that we want to go back and revisit because I don't think it's fair to our viewers or listeners or certainly not our guests either to only play them once. Uh, also, Nick, born from necessity because we are both uh, going to be out of town for a while. MIA, yeah. And I, yeah. I'd actually like to name the show the better of the of the Midnight Barbecue because I don't think I think our best is yet to come. So this is the better stuff of our show, right? Way to be motivational. That's cheesy. Build it up just to watch it fall. You give it all just to give it all away. I just need a break so it don't break down. And I just need a break, cause if I break down, it's gonna be the last time. Take a walk down memory lane a little farther. Before the trauma made it harder to walk For a few wrong moves Threw my future in the garbage And everything together started falling apart uh, Follow the plot Boy meets whore Then somehow he falls in love with her with all of his heart But it was wrong for the start, y'all Cause I was looking at her thighs Instead of looking to the sky to see our stars cross I'm thinking she could make a beautiful wife but little do I know she wants to ruin my life I treat her like a princess She's acting like it's just sex I'm praying every day that this relationship will ship wreck But she keeps on rocking the boat Now after three years together We are not even close to being happy Or even getting along But still for some sick reason We keep getting it on I guess it's so hard saying so long Cause her voice sounds so sincere When we don't talk but I finally let it go for good to get away from all of that trouble I could see coming. Now that she's gone, I'm feeling so strong. But out of the blue, she hit me with a phone call saying, Yo, you better take care of yourself, and you better start preparing yourself. You gotta see coming. You know, we're pretty close to that today. We actually have three of those four. And a replacement, I guess. We, we have a full complement of four hosts today. Uh, Bruno, who's here with us tonight? Thanks, Bruno. You knew he wouldn't let us down. No. Not like that, son. Emily, what's up? Welcome. Hi, I'm here finally. <laughs> Let's refresh listeners' memories as yes. to who Emily Brooks is. The first Midnight Barbecue show we've ever done. I've probably told this story 30 times in the last week now. But what's 31? Great story. The first show we ever did, right? We came up with the idea, which actually turned out to be a pretty, pretty cool idea, I think to add on Facebook.com every single person in the country with one given name as our friend and see how many of them would confirm us during, during one two-hour show, the ultimate goal being to bring one of them on for an interview so we could have a random perspective outside the four of us, right? So we let Ian pick the name because we were using his profile, and he chose the first name Emily, last name Brooks. Well, it's, Ian, at the time, Ian had about 1,700 friends. Maybe more. It might have been in the 2000s. Which was out, astounding to me that you have that many friends. You definitely don't know that many people. Um, so we just went with him and his Facebook prowess. Gordy had like 63 at that point. Well, I was over 100, but uh, don't sell me short here. You know? <laughs> You're so, a major slouch, right? Yeah. <laughs> Pick the name Emily Brooks at random. And, um, and we Facebooked 131 of them at the very beginning of the show that night. And within the two hours of the program, 60 of them Facebooked this back, which made Ian's Facebook news feed, if you're familiar with that website, hysterical. It was like, Ian and Emily Brooks are now friends. Ian and Emily Brooks are now friends. Ian and Emily Brooks are now friends. Like 60 of them. 20 of them sent us messages to the effect of, who are you again? <laughs> and then there was this one who caught her attention because when we looked at her profile after she confirmed us, she seemed kind of like a party girl, and this was like midnight at this point, so we figured we can't call somebody who's going to be in the library and passed out of sleep by, you know, 1130 at night. Exactly. Based on her group affiliations, we found out that she was in the I Love Jack Daniels Facebook group. That's so I think right. it was called Jack Daniels, You're My Hero. That's correct, right. Adam. And at that point, we were concerned that we would not actually get her on the phone because she'd probably be at a bar <laughs> drinking Jack Daniels. We actually had that conversation on the show. That's mm -hmm. right. Which was not the case in the long run, right? Right. So we called Emily, and um, I could have <laughs> – it would have taken me two minutes before the show to actually pull that audio again. Didn't do it. I can find it, but it, we'll play that next segment. In the meantime, Emily, do you want to recreate your reaction? Phone rings. Well. Hey. Actually, what went through your mind when you saw that number on I the phone? I saw 
I saw the 434 area code, and I knew that that had to be close to Maryland because my ex-boyfriend is from Baltimore, and his area code is 443, and I thought that it was him or one of his friends trying to contact me. So I was very leery and not very polite when I answered. Should I have, like, a name? Just be like... Gordy. No. <laughs> Bring us one up. Bring us uh, what are we doing? Hello? Hey, did we wake you? I didn't even turn on my mic right now. I'm sorry, did we wake you? Who is this? My name's Bob. This is Tom. You're on Bob and Tom. Radio show in Slidell, Louisiana. How are you doing? My heart, by the way, at this point as we pause the tape, was just like racing. We'd never made a <laughs> prank call on the air before. I've been like a serious sportscaster for like six years at this point. Adam, we had never made a call at this point. We'd never done a show before. <laughs> all right, yeah. keep going. You're not in Louisiana, first of all. And who is this really? Oh, one of those phones with the state. Yeah, we're in Virginia. <laughs> got us. Dang, you got us. This is the first of many times in the conversation where we stop and think, oh, God, now what? Now what? We didn't plan this far. We just thought we'd call her and then, like, just talk to her. But we didn't think about what that means. <laughs> this is where Adam grabbed the reins, I think, right here. I think I had to. All right, keep going. Hey, well, this is Brent. Tell him to block the number and call back. You said you're going to block the number and call back. Him? Who? Brent? Tim was my other ex-boyfriend. He's Who's in Brent? Virginia now. Emily. All right, you got me. On. This is this is Brent. I'm sorry. And now we're grasping at straws. No, we're doing anything just to keep you from hanging up on us. Emily. Did you just <laughs> you hear that? I'm in the background. I'm <laughs> tapping out. And Gordy actually literally tapped the table and went, I'm done. <laughs> and left. He went to the back corner of the room where uh, where David is now and just hung out back there. No, here's the thing. We do a show. Okay, it's it's a brand new show. We're not live. Don't worry. Um, it's yeah. intended for we'll never basically either, for college so. students from people who are out late at night. This pains so we're me. Sorry to, to bother you, and we're glad we didn't wake up some family. Late pains at night. me. Adam, we've, we've, sorry, we've come a long way. Anyway, at that point, we basically were in conversation, yes. and we, and you know, yeah. it's all done. The hook has sunken in, and yeah. she uh, had her. Man, that's the longest first segment we've ever done. We got to get a break. We'll we'll be back after this in the midnight barbecue. So what's your background in music? Uh, you know, I just grew up playing music and uh, wrote songs my whole life. And uh, just started, we, I recorded uh, my first record about four years ago. And um, uh, it went really well. Put a band together from that. Did a bluegrass record. And then finally the band kind of came around and we started, you know, playing a bunch now. And we're doing pretty well and, and recording, recording a new record coming out in the fall. So The show is called The Midnight Barbecue. Our guest is Peyton Tochterman. And uh, Peyton's actually got his axe out. What did you call it when Helen came in? Her axe? Yeah. yeah. The guitar laces and the... Oh, well, yeah. Well, Helen doesn't actually uh, play chords. She doesn't know what a chord is. She wouldn't know a C chord from a D chord Who, from a J chord. Helen Horrell. Oh, man, she's great. She is good. Uh, my my buddy James just uh, uh, recorded and produced her record. She's yeah. part-time co-host of this show, actually. Oh, she's awesome, man. I'll, I love her. Yeah, so she doesn't know chords from, you know, she calls them like the... The Dragon Claw and the Old Man. <laughs> right. That's so we, right. we were calling her guitar like the, I don't know, the, the, she's pressing the guitar laces instead of the, oh, right, right. the strings. strings. I don't know. So yeah, yeah. So you get your axe out. I think axe is a pretty sweet term for a guitar. Either yeah. way, we're actually going to hear some music. First song is called? Uh, it's a request from the guy over here. Uh, this, uh, this is my jam. Yeah, called Peanut Butter and Jelly. <laughs> I'm nuttier than hell, but hey, we go together, oh so right. You can spread us on white bread, spread us on whole wheat. I ain't never had it in pumpernick, but I bet you it's hard to beat. We go together, oh so right. So right, all the way, child, all through the night. So right.
don't need no pickles, we don't need no lettuce, cause we go together, I'm so right, so right, all the way child. Butter and jelly. Yeah. That was great. I That's love it. That's my jam. Man. That's awesome. That is my jam. That was fun. You need to get that, that from the MySpace, very man. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was Coombs esque essentially no, that in was... terms of uh, um, entertainment. Oh no, that's a very entertaining song. Very good. It's song. smart though. Smart, witty. Yeah. I mean, not, like, all the songs are pretty witty and smart. I, I love think. it. Mm-hmm. You know, you actually okay. have one song. I ho- could you elaborate on this? Go ahead. It's the personal song. Oh, that's off the first record. And yeah. isn't it actually a uh, extracted from a personals ad in like Seville Hook or something, right? <laughs> yeah, one, I worked in a bronze foundry for sculpture when I first moved to Charlottesville, and and uh, and uh, I was got off work and we were casting some bronze and we were sitting down waiting to go home and the the owner came out, my friend Robert Bricker, and and I was reading these personal ads mm-hmm. from the Seville, and I was laughing my ass off or. Sorry. Yeah, can no, I say you, that? you can I, absolutely. I, was, I would be laughing my ass off too. I was laughing too. my ass off at these things that people were saying, and he goes, "Man, you need to put that in a song." So I went home and and literally, I mean, I literally copied the things from the paper. So I'm probably waiting for a lawsuit somewhere for some person's <laughs> like, "That was me. You hurt my feelings." Like, <laughs> hey, but you were well, you, you had a personal ad. Exactly. You were just you were helping them out, right? You were broadcasting their personal. Hey, man, I was trying to get them hooked. One of them was like, "I saw you at Harris Teeter Wine Guy or Wine House." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My favorite one was, uh, "Our dogs became romantically entangled at Penn Park last Saturday." Yeah, I, I, Heard that line, a yeah. counterpoint to our own painful repression, my tail is still wagging. Single. Oh, <laughs> That's a good song. That is a very good song. I'll tell you my favorite, and yeah. I, I'm going to name names because he works with me here at the station. He's a nice guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rob Schilling. Yeah, um, yeah you're right. Yeah. Right, who used to be city councilor. Okay, Rob is the morning show host now. That yeah. kind of a uh, filled in for Dick Matt Joy. Um, you know, was nice enough to come in here and start filling in in the mornings when Dick got sick. Right. Rob was famous for his long hair, right? When he was running for uh, for city council for the right. first time. Does, does he still have long hair? And he does. He yeah, does have so, well, yeah. but so I remember reading the hook one week or Seville Weekly or one of those publications where there were personal ads and I remember seeing a um it was a picture of Rob standing on uh the corner of like uh you know Preston Avenue and and um I don't know Tenth Street, right. holding up a sign that said thank you to everyone who was voted for him, right? Right, right. And um you know, and with his wife right next to him. And then if you scroll ahead like 40 pages to the personal ads, there was one that said, uh, to the man with the uh, long wavy hair who was standing <laughs> so, at the uh, intersection of 10th and Preston uh, with the sign that said, thank you, let me just say, thank you. <laughs> I don't know great. who that woman you were with uh, is, but if you're interested, call this that's, number. That's great, man. That's and so perfect. I thought that was, that was amusing. That's perfect. Good show tonight. That was fun. But what does that mean? <laughs> that means good 20 seconds. Out, yeah. All right. <laughs> Emily? Yes. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. I had so much fun. Thank you a million times and more for having me on the show tonight here live in the studio. Thank you for coming up. It's been more than real. It's been very much fun. And I'm I'm glad you guys got to uh, put my textbook to use. <laughs> well, I think that's it and that's all. So we got to get out of here. But uh, check us out at MidnightBarbecue.com. And uh, we'll see you next weekend. They're going to cut us off just before that. Check us out Midnight. All right. We'll see you all later. <laughs> That's that. That's wow. Cool, <laughs> cool. Very much fun. What a good one. That was a good one, dude. That was a good show. You know how to wrap a microphone? Please. Oh, I was going to let you do it, but okay. It's really just a gentle just process. Take the thing I tell you what, um, Nick, if you don't mind, yeah. can you handle getting all this torn down? I'm going to run and take sports so we can yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, thanks. I'll be done with this in 10 minutes. Okay. Great. Ooh. I feel like I should pull, like, because David's still taping. I should pull some, I'm you know, I just put this on and kind of saunter out of here on my horse. So. Gallop out of here. So. <laughs> Folks, until next time. Ma'am. <laughs> Ma'am. <laughs> I can't stop looking into the camera while David's filming. Because like, the camera's a transformer. I thought about hiring <laughs> David before to, uh, to <laughs> just follow me around. Everywhere. To do for a few days. Um... So I just decided this very second that that's not going to happen. I'll be back. No, that camera. <laughs> Something more discreet, please. Welcome back to the Best of the Midnight Barbecue. I am uh, Nick Noe. Adam's putting his headgear on and uh, joining me. I just realized that looked completely staged with me doing that. I completely forgot that we were about to get back on and tape a segment, so I reached down and 
picked it up, but it occurred to me that as you were talking, and I just like waited, and then went. That's chemistry right there. It looked like something that we probably had pre-planned, and we didn't because we don't do that on the midnight barbecue. We pre, we actually. I, if people wanted to know um, how, where do these great ideas come from? You know? Exactly, what a day uh, in the life of Nick Noe or Adam Gottschalk would be. It would involve very little um, pre-planning or production for the midnight barbecue. You'd be surprised, or well, maybe nothing not. formal. I don't think. I think we talk about the show a lot among, with each other and with other people. Usually, yeah. it's us saying things like, yeah, "It's it's a great show." Check it out. Wasn't that show great last night? <laughs> Or or hearing comments like that, this is the most awesome show I've ever seen. Yeah, or getting a call from one of our co-hosts saying, "Do we have to take that show again tonight?" His, his enthusiasm is infectious. Yeah, it, it's an infection, no question. Just like this next clip. Hey, nicely done. Yeah, you gotta strike when the opening's there. We understand that you're gonna give us a little cultural knowledge, in case we ever travel abroad, on how to say probably the most successful six or seven words in vocabulary, which is, I'm bringing sexy back. And this is how you do it in German, so let's hear that. Four words. Ich bringe sexy zurück. Ich one, bringe... Wait, 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 wait. one more time. Ich bringe sexy zurück. Zurück. <laughs> ich Can you bringe that? sexy so, zurück. Wait, wait, the, the, big, the big part that stands out about that, the sexy. German word for sexy is... Sexy. Sexy. <laughs> That is more knowledge than that whole sentence, actually. So if I go to Germany, I could be sexy all the time, and they'd be like, yeah. <laughs> you say sexy, sprechen Sie Deutsch? Sexy. All right, who's the, who's the biggest? Is there like a big uh, boy band kind of pop uh, you know, superstar in Germany? Who should we Google? Who should we look up online? Gunther. Get some music. Ooh, um, in German. Like us five, probably, or something like that. OS5? Us five. How do you spell us five? Just like us. Us five. Oh, us, us five. five. Us five. I, so right. they're, they're five people. Ja. Yeah. Ja. <laughs> hey, Torsten, thanks. Uh, Thank well, you, man. Yeah, appreciate Thank it. Thank you. One more, one more time. One more time. Ich bringe sexy zurück. Yeah, there you go. All right, there we go. <laughs> oh, the right. pound. The pound. The pound. Shed some light into this hopeless mess Shield the most innocent eyes Precious witnesses Don't watch, I'm slipping I'm losing sight of myself Feels like the first time I don't want you to see This life won't go on and on And it's not worth trying to live That is beating down your countenance Leaving you alone and desperate Turn the light on into my darkest hour you let your demons slip away Unaccounted for Don't watch, I'm falling I'm losing part of myself This is the last time You will ever see Me like this this life won't go on and on And it's not worth trying to live A lot that's beating down your countenance Leaving you alone and desperate All of the faces that I've seen Dark silhouettes abandon me Those solid eyes have let me see All of the minds that need relief This life won't go on and on And it's not 
not worth trying to live A life that's beating down your countenance Leaving me alone and desperate All of the faces that I've seen Dark silhouettes abandon me And the thought of you makes me let it go I see it's interviewing the little kids is they you know, in a very midnight barbecue kind of way, like, all right, kid, come over here. You know, I got some questions for you. So Harry Potter, you know, just fuck around with him a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, 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 definitely. I think what's going to be funnier, though, is adults who are acting like children at the Harry Potter thing, they can, we can ask even, like, more ridiculous questions, too. Like, so out of curiosity, how old are you? Why are you here? Thank you, just, just curious. All right, that's all we needed to know. 48, Jesus. <laughs> are you still with your I, I, I'm writing the question right now. Are you single? What if we organize some kind of trivia event? And I, like, I really think that they better have dire consequences. It's not just like win and you get a prize. It's like lose and you lose the, your place in line. You don't get the book. <laughs> <laughs> we could let like the 38 year old guys who are there for the Harry Potter book, we could like tell them that Emily's interested in them and just like lead them on because I'm sure none of them have ever had a date. And Emily could be like, right. I will totally play. She could I be our will bait. totally play on that. Bambi? Yeah. Yeah. Bambi. No, we're not bringing Bambi out tonight. No. <laughs> to send a numeric page, press five. When you are finished recording, hang up. Or for delivery options, press pound. Ian, hey, darling. This is uh, Bambi here from the uh, Big Horse Saloon. You know, I was your uh, bartender the other night. You uh, slipped me your number. So I just thought I'd give you a call. You know, a little late night chat. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Ian, I'm sorry. This is Emily from the radio. <laughs> Yo, I'm scared of what this call's going to be. Hey, man. Uh, four plus the wireless. Yes. If you don't have enough, I have one or two with me, I think. Is it good? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you want to try it? That's fine. Just set up three and I'll, I'll bring it forth. It's very interesting. Cool. We got the wireless stuff? Yeah. Do you know what kind you of it is? Oh, we have the wireless stuff? When? Whenever. Okay. You don't have anything to do. They have so many videos. Cool. You the man. Really? Yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah, we'll get there soon. What's in the box? 20 Harry Potter books. Wow. You're kidding. 20. How heavy is that? <laughs> wow. 
let anyone touch it. <laughs> he actually Why literally ripped that away from me. I reached he really to see how heavy it was. He ripped it away from me. What? Racketeering, selling them. Oh. All right. Relatives. We got to run. Hey, thanks, Ryan. Good luck with the Hermione, all that stuff. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Midnight Barbecue is, as always, brought to you by the Charlottesville Radio Group. We appreciate everybody joining us tonight. Have a safe drive home if you're listening to us out here. Uh, otherwise, uh, well, enjoy waiting on your copy of the Harry Potter book. Uh, don't don't, don't read and drive. Wait till yeah. you get home. <laughs> Hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. Yes, yes. Please come. For the crew, Madam Gottschalk, Please. thanks for listening. Well, you're still watching the best of the Midnight Barbecue. I'm Nick Noe, Adam Gottschalk here. So pretty much because this is the best of the Midnight Barbecue, if you don't like what you see, um, just don't even bother trying to watch the show because really this is this is what we got. It's the best of it. And if conversely, if you like it, then it, it's pretty much all downhill from here. But yeah. uh, give us a shot because – See some more of it. Yeah, the odds are we're going to find something good in the future. Yeah, as good as Adam's shirt right there. Yeah, I've yeah, – Did you make that yourself? I did. Did you make that yourself? Actually, I, um, mm-hmm. I, I found a couple letters and mm. I, I sewed them. Uh, one thread at a time to say who crew. <laughs> Dedication, I like that. Actually, yeah. no, the truth is I, I get a lot of shirts for free, and um, and I wear them because they're free. Hmm. Unlike you, who goes out and buys things to make a shirt. Well, somebody went out and bought stuff to make that shirt, so how am I any different? We made the sign together. Hello, this is uh, reporter Bruno Wainwright calling from uh, WBEV in Beaver, Oklahoma. Uh, I'm sorry, got this number off a database. I hope I'm not disturbing you. Um, no. We are, uh, we're calling some people on the East Coast because we're about to go uh, live with our 10 o'clock news here in Oklahoma. Uh, obviously, the town has been, uh, been devastated last week, uh, the passing of Nick Noe. Uh, can you give us your comments on that? We're trying to get a national perspective. A national perspective. I don't. I actually don't have any comments. Do you? Uh, you do know who Nick Nowy was, right? Not really. Uh, he was. Uh, he was a farmer here in uh, Oklahoma. It touched a lot of lives. Uh, he. Uh, he put a lot of kids through high school. Did he? Can you? Uh, I'll tell you what. Since we're about to go. Uh, since we're about to go live here. Um, if you can give us just some thoughts, I mean, is there anything that you can tell us? Uh, you know, we're, we're really running low on time. I'm really sorry to bother you. Uh, Nick, uh, you know, Nick's, uh, you, you've heard of Noe's Nectar Farm, right? Um, no, no. Uh, well, I tell you what, can you just give us some thoughts on, on some, in a positive way, just about Nick Noe? Um, yeah, uh, sure he was great. Great guy. Thank you for your time, sir. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye. <laughs> Yo, where did you keep your composure? That was good. That Adam. was awesome. <laughs> but you're just one kiss for now. And this is just one night for now. One more song to sing of myself to sleep. That same old melody, it's stuck in my head again. And you're just a man for now But oh my god, those hands They spin me out of my skin Just spin me out Spin me out of here So talk me into believing you Then talk me into myself Turn me over and lie to me Those familiar calms I'm dealt And talk me into a tomorrow with you Then talk me out of my clothes That bedroom waltz that I can't sing to Oh, these curling toes But don't do this to yourself again And I am thinking the whole time Don't do this to yourself again
Thank you, but you come and help you. Yeah, we need some salt. Say what? What? We need some salt. Oh, you need some salt. Get salt, salt over here, bro. Say what? We're running low on salt. We need salt. We don't know where to go. We don't have a car. I. You, you want me to give you directions somewhere? No, no, no. We don't have a car. We need someone who can deliver. Do you have salt? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. starving. I'm confused there. What's your phone number? We do have subs. All right. Uh, our phone number. You ready? Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, three eight, uh, two six. Is this going to uh, thirteen fifty seven South Main Street? Um, sure. <laughs> okay. What would you like? You want some subs? What kind of subs? Do you know? No, 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 not subs. We need salt. Oh, you need salt. We need salt. You need salt delivered. We made some rice. It needs salt. Oh, you want to deliver salt? We have garlic salt. Do you have garlic salt? Yeah. Dude. Yeah, I'm gonna put you on hold. <laughs> All right, we're. <laughs> They must have been pranked before. That's a good one this time, yeah. guys. That's good. How can I help you? Hi, can I get some pepper, please? You want green peppers or do you want... What kind of pepper do you want? BLACK PEPPER! Um, I'm gonna put you on hold again. Thank you. <laughs> I think we lost Bruno. <laughs> and I lost my voice. Oh, man. Uh. <laughs> NOT THE BLACK PEPPER! <laughs> oh, goodness. Gordy, nice job. Thank you. Wow, I don't. Lots of lots of years of experience. You've been practicing. Yeah. <laughs> and I totally was out of that. So. Bruno's <laughs> crying. And Bruno's literally crying. Strongest dose of common sense won't be the heaviest medicine for this roller coaster that you won't ride. But your pretty package promised land just sent me back to hell again. Where you were cold, I got back inside. Wait a minute, me, there's better places I should be. I'm walking downtown by. Wait a minute, me, there's better places I could be I'm walking downtown by myself And knowing what we know when it's too hot we let it go Or just sleep it off with someone else Connections, baby, I will float away Day by daily interventions, maybe we will be okay If you anchor me with disconnections, baby, I will float away Day by daily interventions, maybe This is Mark Thompson. He's the master brewer at Star Hill Brewery. We're about to take the tour. It's behind us over our shoulder. It's fun today, isn't it? It's a, it's a blast. Yeah, we're, we're kicking ass, doing real well. It's 
the first time we've ever opened this up like the beer garden. Yeah, it's the first time. We got like all our friends and all our family in town, you know, like doing all right. We got some good music going on. So I tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna hand you the microphone and we're just gonna follow you and let you do the, all the, the magic from here on out, all right? We can do that. Y'all ready? Ready to go? Ready to go? Ready to go? Ready to go? Let's go! We gotta stop right here. I got an important thing to do. Alright. That is called the disco light. That is how beer is made, right there. You put the disco light on, you get a little of this, you get a little of that, you get a little woo! And that's the magic, that's the love right there. We put a that disco light on, baby. Yeah! So we got the, uh, the grain right here. This is where we started doing the whole tour. We uh, take a little sample of this grain, eat a, eat a kernel of this. It's gonna remind you a lot of Quaker oatmeal, breakfast cereal. This is where our sugar comes from. This is how we get the, jo you know, the Jomo started, by grinding this stuff up into a coarse meal. We grind up grain just like a winemaker crushes grapes, and this is the sugar. You can taste it sweet, right? We take this grain, we grind it up. We have a different like style. Yeah, we have like light stuff and dark stuff. We grind it up in the uh, the big grinder behind you there, and then uh, that that's where we start making the magic. Right? That big hopper underneath there holds about a thousand pounds of barley. Each recipe has like a mixture of like two bags of this, two bags of that, a pinch of flour, you know, snips and snails and puppy dog tails. And we, we mix all that <laughs> stuff up in here and we grind all those puppy tail and snails up and we, you know, we take them up and out into that first brew vessel. So we're going to go around in the brew house next and we're going to see where all this ground up barley gets brought out and we start cooking the beer. You ready to do that? Cheers. Let's yeah. do that. All right. The hand mic is something that's like straight up rock and roll. All right, so we've got all that barley that we ground up, and we're bringing it up and out and into the, fir uh, into the first cooking vessel. So this first cooking vessel that you see receives that milled up barley. It's got paddles up there. We'll go up and take a look and get some shots of it. Take the barley and the water. We mix it up in that first vessel, a lot like uh, a Quaker oatmeal would be, your breakfast cereal. It gets mixed up. We then bring it into the second vessel, which has screens on the bottom of it, a lot like a coffee maker would be, and spray balls on top. Take all that barley and water, we bring it over here, we spray water on top, and we start extracting out all the barley juice off of that. Again, a lot like making coffee. If you took this second vessel and stacked it on top of the first one, you'd have an enormous kick-ass coffee maker. And that's more or less what this whole thing is about. So we take the barley, we spread the water, we suck the, uh, the barley juice back into that first vessel, we add hops in there, it gives aroma, a bitters and flavor, we boil it for an hour and a half, it goes from that vessel into the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the whirlpool, which is behind you. That's a big settling vessel. So we basically take all that barley juice, we pump it in that third vessel, it settles out. We then take it and pump it from that settling vessel out and over into the fermentation cellar. Have we talked about the disco light yet? I don't know if we have or not, but that's the disco light. That's the most important thing about making beer. All right, so this is the fermentation cellar. Uh, where, this is where the magic happens. We add the yeast. We got that big pot of coffee. We brought it over here. We have added some yeast. The yeast converts sugar to ethanol and carbon dioxide. The yeast are little single cell organisms, just like you and I. They gotta make a living in this world. You know how they make their living? They eat sugar, they piss alcohol, and they fart carbon dioxide. That's their life cycle. That's how they make the magic. So beer is made by yeast creating alcohol carbon dioxide. This tank right here, he's, he's gonna get an extreme close-up right here. Right here, extreme close-up. Extreme. Extreme close-up. That's fermentation. Once that thing starts bubbling again, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just here to go, woo! All right, so we got yeast. We add yeast. It makes sugar, carbon dioxide. It, it ferments for about a week. We cold condition it for three weeks. Takes its four, it sits in this tank for four weeks, and then it starts to be processed through a filter into the carbonated tanks. I'm going to give you guys an exclusive behind-the-scenes taste of Star Hill Amber Ale out of the tank before anyone else has ever had it. So I'm going to turn it over to Adam, and here he is. Hold on. I'm excited about this. This is the uh, this is like pre first day. This is this is like a uh, fetus essentially. It's a beer fetus. God bless you guys for coming down. Love the midnight barbecue. You guys rocked. Thank Come, you. Viva La Star Hill. Long live Star Hill. God bless you. Earth things don't. Understand Earthlings have a way of Getting under my skin They like money, food, sex With strings attached 
I avoid them whenever I can. Earthlings say there are two sides to every coin. Two sides to every coin. They lie to me. We all know there's three. I'm just hanging around the rim. Nothing like a nice warm body to hold. In the middle of the night. Nothing like a sweet somebody to love in the middle of the night. I know I sound a little spaced out. Earthlings don't understand. No possibilities, no in between. I'm just hanging around the rim. Nothing like a nice warm body to hold in the middle of the night. Earthlings don't understand. Honestly. You ate three hot dogs in 12 minutes? I, I, my prediction for myself was 14, right? And I think I can at least do 12. Nick Noe. Ah, nice. I'm glad you did that. What? Three hot dogs for this guy? No, I was like half I'm not even on this show. Like three and three quarters. So give me credit for. Give me credit for. Honestly, it's one hot dog every three and three quarters. Or three and a half minutes. How many hot dogs did you eat in 12 minutes? 12. Okay, my prediction was 14. I said 14. I thought 12 was like a reasonable compromise. Like if I could eat 12, I'd be satisfied. Honestly. Guess how many actually ate in 12? Three. Four and a half, right? Like three hot dogs. Three, three, three quarters. That's terrible. Honestly. Honestly. HDBs? Yeah. HDBs. Honestly, dogs I would cut off water. I would honestly cut off my nuts at that point. Hey, what's up, guys? We probably know more of you by name than we don't, so we don't really need to introduce ourselves, but I'm Adam, this is Nick. Yeah, that's right. That is correct. We're the Midnight Barbecue. Check us out. Uh, MidnightBarbecue.com. We're a local radio and television program. We have been, uh, we went to the Star Hill Brewery today and did the show out there. So Nick and I have actually been drinking hey! at 11 o'clock this morning. And we figured on a day when it's, uh, I think we're probably each over about 20 beers at least by this point, and that's conservative. Um, what better way to close it out than with these guys, right? This is, we, yeah, this is a great. Uh, this is our own six day bender, I think. We're on our own individual six day bender, and we're, we're going to close it out with a real thing. Uh, I, I probably think a lot of the people in the house aren't really bluegrass fans, and it's probably because you don't never really heard it or. But see, this isn't even bluegrass. This is mountain rock and roll. This is good stuff. This is. Uh, we have three of the five members of 60 members. Five of you, right? All right, we got three of the five. So this is fun. This is just for you guys tonight. This is not a. Um, well, we have King Wilkie down the street. They're charging an arm and a leg, probably. Uh, you get the same kind of music, and it's free here. So there you go. Let's get ready to mount it, rock and roll. Walk down. Ain't no reason to run to walk down. I don't know what to say or what to do. Kill balls before I kill you. 
One mile, the sign says. One say. mile away from Camp Jeep, and this has the potential to be the defining moment of my childhood. Certainly. I certainly agree with that. How's the driver holding up? Uh, the driver's doing all right. Do you want to go outside there? You're squinting. Mm, I think this squinting is more s s swelling. <laughs> <What's> <laughs> <that I'm squinting? laughs> it's the midnight barbecue. Madam Gottschalk, Nick Noe's walking up. We're at Camp Jeep. There are a ton of Jeeps here. Everywhere you look, there are Jeeps. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of Jeeps. I'm watching this BMX stop. So, where we are right now is the very entrance to Camp Jeep. This is in Nelson County, I think, for the fourth time, so just south of Charlottesville. They say 12,000 Jeeps are here on, like, what feels like about 100 acres worth of nothing but a giant parking lot, and it's all the same kind of car. Right over my left shoulder is Tony Hawk and Sean White doing a skateboarding display. There's snow tubing here, it's about 90 degrees. Skiing. <laughs> this is absurd. Uh, we will find out what there is here. There's a lot. A lot going on. And um, where to now, man? So just come in with us. Let's go explore Camp Jeep. All right, we are in a, uh, what is this that we're driving? This, this is Ryan, right? Ryan. This is Ryan. a Jeep Unlimited four-door Wrangler Sahara edition. 2007. 2007. Why Sahara? Is it made for the desert or? All right, where are we going? This is 2008. 2008, even better. All right, and just stay on the uh, path. Yes, yeah, like, like we already have somebody here who's completely wiped out. Have they lost it? <laughs> nah. Feet on the gas? Uh, yeah, you won't have to use in hardly any brake going through this course. Plus, we're being in four low, first gear. You're only going to be going so fast. Let's go up on the high side, bro. Give me some ride. Give me some ride. There we go. Just like that. All right, same thing over here. Stay to the high side. That way you get the experience of it. That's what oh, I'm that's getting the experience. There's no question about that. That's what Camp Jeep's all about. What happens if we roll it? You're not going to roll it. <laughs> I won't let you. All right. What do you have like a driving school foot pedal over there? Now I have the e-brake right here in the middle and I can always grab the wheel. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some more right. Let's get up on the high side, bud. Come on, this, Adam. As long as you don't hit the flags, man, I'm good. You can get as close to the flags as possible. Just don't take them out. It, you little, know, you're making a huge mistake putting your life in my hand. Little instruction. No crossover. Give me the shuffle. It's called the shuffle. Okay. Keep both hands on the wheel at Stay all times. Stay on the high side? Both hands on the wheel. All high times. Side? Yeah, high side. Take it on the high side. There we go. Jeez. Very nice. Biggest thing, always try to keep it smooth and consistent, especially when going into obstacles. These are rocks. <laughs> well, these are rocks. You can't keep it so smooth. It's, well, when I say smooth, as far as <laughs> you're you're gliding over the obstacles. Okay, I'm gliding. Yeah, that's right. That's a glide. There we go. I think, I think there's hydroplane. There's no water. There we go. Oh, perfect. And this is called articulation course. This will be bumpy. Now, Nick drives a Hyundai. Could that do this? No. Santa Fe? Uh, they, no, actually, Sonata. Elantra. Uh, Sonata. Even worse, yeah. Sonata. I wouldn't try I it, wouldn't, I wouldn't make it this I wouldn't advise far. it. We're going to go right, we're gonna go right under these timbers, so give me a lot of right. Easy on the gas, easy on the gas. Stay on the brake. Ah, stay on the brake. All right. On the brake. Let it go, let it go, let it go. And gas. And another thing I'll point out, keep your thumbs out on the steering wheel, just like that. You don't want to interlock. <laughs> Just in case you do hit something and it snaps that wheel around, you might have a oh, sore thumb for a couple weeks. This or is even this months. is all about accuracy. I'm bad at this. 
All right, no break, no gas while we're no gas while we're going over the logs. We'll watch his hand signals, and I'll verbally tell you what they are. Stop, stop. Left, I mean, all right, go straight. I mean, go forward. Left. All right. Okay. Level it out. There we go. There. Perfect. Good. Yes, sir. Get Benny in the shot. So, how's my driving so far? Uh, it's I came good. at this a little off, right? My yeah. angle was not quite right. Yeah, but uh, you recovered pretty good. That was pretty good there. All right. So I got nothing to say about that. <laughs> is the rest of it better or worse than what we've already done? Um, the worst part that we have here is that little hill, which is you're in the good lane right here. It's a little tricky where it might slide a little bit, so we might have a little fun on that. I'm well, we all it. have our own definitions of fun. <laughs> Thanks, right, Ben. All right, guys. You guys enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you, man. Enjoy the show. See you, man. Have fun. Yeah, see, all right, see how he's, see oh. how, yeah, he's just going to have to go sh straight over. He's, that's a trip. That's the first one that's done that all week. Well, how about two in one minute? How do you feel about that? Nah, I'm not going to let you do that, but. <laughs> Give me some gas, gas. All right, there we go. All right, gas, brake, and right through here. Give me a lot of right, a lot of right, a lot of right. There we go. And we're going to hit this track right okay. here. How you doing? Right here, take a left. Very nice. Alright. There's no traffic lights here. some gas. You know, this is actually the main highway in Lovingston, Virginia, believe it or not, when it's not being used by Camp Jeep. Hey. Man, oh man. Oh, no. Looks like we lost one. Wow, those tires are very. Just keep keep your eyes focused. Awesome, on, man. Keep your eyes focused on the road. I'll tell you how much gas to get. All right, speed up. Yeah, give me some gas. And just stay at constant pressure. Constant pressure. Okay, okay. There we go. Gas. Perfect. Give me a little right when we crest it. Little right. There we go. No brake. Go all, no brake. Go all the way down. And gas. Perfect. Perfect. Is that worse than the one uh, in, in town? Yeah, keep going. That was worse than the one in town. Yeah. No, of course, man. They can't set anything on the downtown mall. It's yet. pretty. It's pretty high. But, but they got down. And we're just gonna follow our, their hand signals. We'll probably pull to the right of that gray jeep right there. All right. Yeah, we got it. right here. Right here to the right of it. All right. We're gonna pop your emergency brake up. Stop. Neutral for a second. Adam. Thank you, sir. All right, we are now here underneath a large uh, white tent airplane hangar style thing and they have um, jeeps from every year ever I think here uh, all sorts of styles so that I've ever seen so right now we're in a, uh, a combat vehicle and um, we we're actually headed to a cock fight we have a, a, a live cock back here and we're um, and there's a yeah, we're in a actually, country right now where it's legal it's actually a working gun yes um, we just actually accidentally gun someone down but that nobody saw that so let's just not get that on tape no, so, so far it's so, so good here at the uh, it's hot. This is air conditioning, and we're about to go meet Tony in a second, I think. And uh, I'm pumped about that. Hungry though. With all the Jeeps in this room, which one are you taking home with you? Oh, I'm gonna take home that um, SRT8. Give me the Grand Wagoneer, and I'm a happy guy. They said don't touch the Grand Wagoneer. You see that sign? There's actually some that's going to this one. Really? Yeah. Oh. Oops. This is not the first time uh, ever on the Midnight Barbecue that I've had a gun pointed at me, but this is the first time it's been by somebody who's almost 300 years old, or maybe a little more than that. I am Pierre Crusat. I lived in St. Charles. My father was Jean-Baptiste Crusat. We were raised in a little Catholic village. I am the best river boatman this side of the Mississippi. When you were exploring the wilderness uh, with Lewis and Clark, what model Jeep did you all take? Was it a Wrangler or was it the, uh, the bigger bigger model Jeep so that you know you could fit more people in it? Or was it just a caravan this, of a whole bunch of Jeeps? This Jeep that we used at the time, uh, we would make a dugout form and we cut down trees. The very first Jeep 
we cut down trees in 22 inch circles and portage it over the Great Falls. We thought it would take us two days, it took us a month, four weeks to do this in the very first Jeep. And then we put sails on these Jeeps and we could go over the prairie and the winds would actually cause us to sail across the prairie. Most remarkable. There you go. That was the first Jeep. Hey, thank you so much. Yes. Yes. Have fun today. Bon voyage. Yes. Oh my goodness, here we go. Is everybody at Camp Chief ready for the final show? Yeah. This is it. All right here, we're warming it up once we get this thing going. The crowd gets into it, and the boys get busy. today because I haven't made 540s in about five years now. And I really wanted to lay it down today. I actually wanted it yesterday. And I knew today if the right music came on and I was just in the right mood that it was going to happen. And there was that last split second where I just knew it was there. And I let it go and bam. I'm a very happy person today. When do you have to make the decision that I'm going for it? Is it just like the score of the moment? Or you have to know coming into the, the, yeah, the jump. Kind of, you got you to make sure you got the spin going and then you got to make sure that you got your hand get on the board and your feet aren't going anywhere. So most of the time I just spin and my feet move around. How cool is it? I've had the last couple days where it's kind of stayed on and today I just I just felt like my feet were on, I was just gonna make it. So it just got past that point and I just let the music get in my mind instead of anything else. So it worked. Johnny! Thank you! Awesome! Hey Tony, why keep you coming back to this Jeep event? Ah, uh, the invite. As long as Jeep's invited me, I'm coming back. Get your shirt so it doesn't come out. It will. Thanks, Tony. You're awesome. Thanks, buddy. Guys, we have a Jeep with its lights on. Uh, somebody, is there a Jeep in the parking lot here? It has its lights on. Anybody drives a Jeep? Nobody? All right. All right, so tell me about what you all are doing here. Do you guys uh, work for Jeep? Are you just kind of locals who are, who are here? We're actually working for a promotional company and we park everybody, make sure that everyone's in a good mood when they get here. And um, it's a lot of fun to see everybody. So have you had anybody try and, you know, talk their way into a parking lot they're not supposed to be in or things like that this week? Oh yeah, that happens all the time. We'll get like, people trying to come in VIP and, you know, ask, you know, are you VIP? And they say, of course, but, you know, you can't really tell unless they have the red stickers. All right, so again, break down my form one last time. Yes. Get the smile first. Smile. You welcome them in. Circle to the direction that they need to go. Keep smiling. There Guys, go. just just going by. Right. We're on our way. Thank you. Woo! All right. Woo! Woo! 
Is this an okay move? Can I do this to help point Sure, sure. Oh. All right. Yeah, we're well, thank you. Time. We'll You're welcome. I appreciate that. Anytime. It's nice to meet you. You too. Well, we are uh, leaving Camp Jeep here. Um, more knowledgeable about Jeep than when we began. And uh, I don't know, Tony, Tony Hawk thing was awesome. Absolutely. And, uh, and um, I think it was a good day here for Jeep and for us as well, so. Uh, would you drive a Jeep after this? I would consider it. I mean, no other car company really like puts it out there and says, come try our stuff. I think the biggest so. thing, Nick, that I, I took from this is this Camp Jeep experience was not as creepy as I expected it to be. And I mean that in the nicest way possible. They got some cool stuff going on here, and uh, it makes you want. To, it kind of makes you want to be a part of it. So. Gets out here for life. And you know, life plays itself out so loudly. I was some concertina for your love. I was afraid you might not hear the notes I had to play for you. Paul, you've already done syrup. It's not going to get much worse than this. Let's, uh, let me go ahead and let you know what you're eating here. We're going to start with the beef plate. Okay. On the beef plate, we have four excellent fancy feasts. Uh, we got beef feast and sauce, okay. which differs from tender beef feast. Oh. Beef feast and gravy. And beef giblets feast and gravy. Now, a discerning cat would know the difference between all four. Question is, do you? I'm gonna start with number one here. Number one. <laughs> Dude, I think that might be uh, the tender beef feast. Tender beef feast. You are correct. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's one down. <laughs> two, two might be tainted by a little bit of hot sauce here. Um. All right. Get the end. He's narrowed the choices down. He's got his first one correct. Yeah. You got a 33% chance of getting this right, just based on odds alone. But I'm going beef feast and gravy. Beef feast and gravy. He is correct. Oh, <laughs> All right, two for two. That's mathematics, and that's not appreciated here. So one out of two, Paul. Um, I'm going with number three, being beef feast and sauce. Beef feast and sauce. You are correct. Yeah! Three, four, three. Well, this guy cannot miss. <laughs> On to four. And my process of elimination, <laughs> beef and giblets, beef and gravy. <laughs> that is incorrect. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. Well, welcome back to the Best in the Midnight Barbecue. I'm Adam Gottschalk. Uh, Nick Noe is here as well. And uh, we're going to yes. sign off the show. We, thank you for watching our, our best of. Yes. And if, if you, 
we would hope you would be thanking us for compiling it and putting it together for you. But uh, well, thank Bruno. Hopefully, the, uh, the feeling is the same. Well, actually, thank us for being creative enough to come up with the segments that you watched. Yes, thank us. Modesty is a uh, is a real virtue. So, for everyone who's a part of putting this together, Bruno, all the guests who we featured on the show, that mm-hmm. was fun to go back and kind of take a trip down memory lane into the recent uh, April. Yeah, it's been what, like 22, 23 episodes. I think we're no, yeah around there. That's a blue by. If that's twenty two episodes, that's forty four hours of programming we have now created. Yes. And for those of you who didn't like what you just saw, uh, you go create forty four hours of programming, then send us the best of what you did, and we'll <laughs> judge you. Okay. Uh, sounds good. So for the great, uh, yeah. for everybody else, uh, Adam Gottschalk, uh, Bruno, you want to sign us off? This is Bruno signing us off. Distracting to the actors that were acting. The balcony was empty, and he said that he would let me if I promised to be quiet. He led me down a hallway, up a stairway, through a doorway, and he Gently kissed his finger, gently kissed too. How can I keep driving when I know I left my keys upon the shelf? How can I keep lying when I'm talking, talking to myself, talking to myself?